we're going to be going over a few CEM review questions for um, boiler and steam systems here. So first, we want to go over um, the equivalent cost calculations for a boiler. So let's look at this. So this is a um, typical CEM question of cost equivalency. So this is, the case here is that natural gas is selling for $1.50 a therm and is used in a boiler with 80% efficiency. What is the equivalent price of electricity in dollars per kilowatt hour in a boiler with a 95% efficiency? So with problems like this, this is the way the three steps I like to do. The first step is pick any input or output. So you can pick any input or output in any of these cases. So first you want to always draw the two systems like I've drawn here. And then you have two inputs and two outputs. Again, it doesn't matter. You can pick 100,000 BTUs. You can pick two gazillion BTUs. You could pick three kilowatt hours. Any input or output in energy you want. So in this case, I picked one therm as the natural gas input only because that's an easy unit to do because then I know I spend a total of $1.50 here because it's $1.50 per therm. That's the price information I know. So that's what I do here. So then the second step is to calculate all other inputs and outputs knowing the output of the two systems are equal. So let's see how that works. So we take this one therm, and then we have to calculate the output of the natural gas boiler because we know the efficiency and we know the input. We can calculate it using input times efficiency equals output, so we get 0.8 therms. Now, since these are serving the same space, it's because it's an equivalent price, we know that the output has to be the same. So that's one of the, the key things we do here. So here the output's the same, so 0.8, and that's why we have the 0.8 there. And then like we're following this arrow here, we can now, since we have the output of this, we can go backwards and find the input by dividing by the efficiency. So output divided by efficiency equals the input. So in this case, the input's 0.84 therms. And using unit conversion, we can find that that's 24.6 kilowatt hours. Then the last step is to calculate the dollar per kilowatt hour, knowing that the total cost you will pay in both cases is equal. So what that's saying is, because it's equivalent price, we're going to pay $1.50 no matter what. So that's why we take the $1.50 down here, and we take it and we divide by the 24.6 kilowatt hours. So it's about six cents a kilowatt hour in this case. Good. So let's jump to our next problem. So this is finding the combustion efficiency from measurements. So whenever you are measuring, you see a measurement of a stack temperature rise and an oxygen level or some other measurements, you want to go ahead and turn right to page 96 in Doty and Turner, which has um, the graphs you will need to do this. So you, um, we're trying to find two different um, efficiencies here, one with a STR of 600 and oxygen level of 3, and then the other you're just changing the STR to 250 degrees um, to see what the change in efficiency would be. So we go from 78% to an 85% efficiency. And then I ask what the percent savings is, um, and then it's just basically just a percent change formula. Remember that's new minus old divided by old. Okay, so in this case, it's 9%. Good. So, now let's go to a steam example. So in this case, um, whenever you see steam, you want to go to the steam tables, and they're in Doty and Turner on page 779. And a process, in this case, a process needs 200 CFM of 300 degree Fahrenheit air to work. So the air is heated from 70 degrees. That's fed with, um, in a steam coil, it's fed with 50 PSI um, absolute saturated steam. And then the condensate return is returned from the steam coil at 230 degrees, 232 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to assume that that condensate is saturated. So now we need to basically figure out how many pounds of steam per hour does this uh, dryer take. So, um, so this is the process is a dryer in this case. So the idea here is we're supplying heat to the air with the steam. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much heat we need to supply to the air. And we do that um, by taking the formula 1.08 times CFM times delta T. Remember, this formula is um, very specific for air, and it's when you have a CFM airflow and when you have a um, temperature change. So we plug in the CFM, we plug in the temperature change, and we get 49,680 BTUs per hour. So that's how much heat we have to supply. Now we have to figure out how much heat we can supply um, per pound of steam, and that's going to come from the steam tables. 
And so here's the really important step right here is knowing how to get these two things. So let me just explain this real quick. So if we look at the steam tables, we really when we're looking for heat, we're looking for enthalpy, which remember the, the units of enthalpy are BTUs per pound. That's why I sort of have the Q steam, which is BTUs, and then per pound here. So, and the H sub G is the enthalpy in saturated vapor. And steam, saturated steam, is saturated vapor. So that's why we have this 50 PSIA saturated steam. That's how much heat is contained in the saturated steam. And then H sub F is shorthand for saturated liquid. And since we're assuming the condensate is saturated, condensate is a liquid, so this is saturated liquid, this is the heat in the saturated liquid. And I apologize, this is uh, the 230, just so you know, is that's what you can easily look up from the table. That's why the 232 turned into 230 here. So the idea is you look these two numbers up in the table using the, the PSI here and the temperature here, and these are the two numbers you get, and that is basically the amount of heat that you get out of when you convert the steam, the saturated steam, to the saturated um, liquid, or the saturated condensate. So you get about 973 um, BTUs per pound. And then you're just looking, you, you know you can deliver this many BTUs per pound, and you need this many BTUs per hour, so you look for the steam flow in pounds per hour, and you basically divide those two numbers, and you get about 50 pounds an hour. So that's the idea is you need to um, figure out how much heat you need, how much heat you can deliver per pound with steam, and then um, you figure out the steam flow there. So now let's look at a flash tank. So let's just read this problem, then we'll talk about it. A surface blowdown from a boiler that operates at 220 PSI is piped to a 120 PSI um, flash tank where the steam produced will be used to run a de feed tank and an air injector to assist in maintaining a vacuum for an evaporative process. How much flash steam is produced in percentage? So the, basically you are, are dropping the pressure and you're flashing some steam and you need to figure out how much steam you produce. Um, so the general formula for this is the percent flashed is the HF high. So remember HF is the um, saturated liquid minus the HF low and then um, divided by the HFG low. So we haven't talked about HFG. That's basically just the um, the heat change that you're when you're going from the saturated liquid to the saturated vapor, which is um, the latent heat of vaporization um, in that point, portion. So in this case, we have we just put in our high PSI and our low PSI for each of these, and we look it up in the table, and we get 5.9%. And again, the tables are on page um, 779 of Doty and Turner. Good. So now let's go to our last example. Our last example is just a leak example. And in this case, when you find a leak in a steam pipe, um, and the system's using 100 PSIA steam, and we're trying to figure out how much steam is lost in a year. So um, the nice part about this is there's a nice table that does this, um, that, show, that shows how much steam is lost in a year on page 151 in Doty and Turner, it's table 613. Um, it gives you the $52,200, or 52, I'm sorry, 52,200 pounds per month of steam wasted. So, and then you can just multiply by 12 to get the, uh, the pounds per year. However, this table is only for 100 PSIA steam. So you wanna make sure that you um, read the, that page to figure out how you would correct if it's a different um, pressure steam line. So those are the boiler, some of the boiler and steam calculations for the CEM. Um, any questions, please, please comment in the section below.